and I heard a couple of different shows saying Patrick Mahomes is hurt. He cannot rush back. He be very, very careful about rushing back. Patrick Mahomes, if he can, needs to play against Green Bay. Would you? Let me ask you this: Would you rather have healthy players sitting out games because of load management, or injured players fighting to get on the field? Which would you prefer? And one of the reasons I like the NFL more than the NBA, and I do love the NBA. I watched two games last night, but I like the NFL more is the urgency and the scarcity of games and games matter and guys play hurt and guys are fighting to get on the field like the rest of us in America. You work with a hangover. You work with a cold. You work when you're sick. You got to pay the bills. It's very relatable. I like I like Jimmy Butler, NBA player. He sat out the season opener last night for personal reasons. That's probably fine in the NBA. I mean, maybe he had something at home, but I've never even heard of an NFL player sitting out for personal reasons. I've never even heard of it. <laughs> so it's a different sport, and I love this about the NFL. Folks, we're only halfway through the season. Kansas City needs to get the number two seed. They're not going to get the number one seed. New England's going to get the number one seed. They got to get the number two seed. They got to play. A, they got to play a playoff game at home. They got to win their division. And Andy Reid is unbelievable off a of bye. We know that. I think he's the best record in the NFL. This is a team that's got some older players, players that have had injuries. They would need to win their division, get a bye. That makes it easier when you do play New England. Now, I think the NFC is better than the AFC, but don't kid yourself. Buffalo has the second-best defense in the NFL. You want to go play at Buffalo? Uh, Indianapolis could win their division and have a better record. Uh, you want to play Indianapolis? You just lost to them at home. They have the best offensive line, certainly the best young offensive line in the NFL, Houston, you want to go to Houston <laughs> to Sean Watson? I mean, the kids magic their defense up front's very good. You start looking around uh, uh, Baltimore. You, you, you want to play in Baltimore? You really, you want to go play the best, the number one points per game offense, the running offense. I mean, seriously, you already beat them and now they're better. Forget New England. You're not going to get a home game against New England, but you got to get home. You got to win this game. You got to win games. You got to play hurt. The other thing is, Mahomes has not been great in these big showdown games in terms of winning. He lost to Goff, remember, on the big Monday night football game? He's lost to Russell Wilson on a Sunday night football game. He lost to Deshaun Watson this year in a big showdown game. He lost to Tom Brady in a playoff game. He lost to Tom Brady in a Sunday night football game. So, I mean, in these big showdown games, he wants to face Aaron Rodgers. He wants to go and face Aaron Rodgers. It's good for him. It's good for the team. It's good for his brand. And they have a chance to win the game. I mean, Green Bay's defense is good. It's not, it's not that good. It's not Buffalo good. It's not New England good. Kansas City can win that football game. We're, we have an NFL where Drew Brees is fighting to get back on the field, and his team's yet to lose without him. He's fighting to get back on the field against Arizona when the Saints are favored by 10 against them, and they have a bye after it. They, I mean, there's never been a game that was easier to sit out for Drew Brees. He's fighting to get back on the field. Last year, Deshaun Watson had to take a bus to a game. He couldn't fly. It was a 10-hour bus ride because he was injured. Like, like the bar's been set in the NFL. There's no load management in the NFL. There's too few games, too much scarcity, too much urgency. You got to play. And Chris Carter talked about it this morning, the Hall of Famer. This is what this league is all about. The reason why the league is what it is in this brutal sport, guys have played through being injured and chancing their career. That's what the league is made on. Just as you were shocked that he was at practice yesterday, I'll be shocked if he's not under center on Sunday, especially after participating in a Wednesday practice that you don't have to. He should play, he will play, and they have a chance if he plays to win, and Kansas City needs to win. Let me shift gears to Baker Mayfield. I was not going to uh, criticize Baker Mayfield this week. I think they'll be okay against New England, won't win, it'll be close. Baker Mayfield, this, this story's now like, like two weeks old, right? Like, like he shouldn't be talking about a game that was, you know, weeks old. He should be talking about New England. That's where his focus should be, right? That's what New England does. What's the old famous saying, Bill Belichick, on to Cincinnati? New England on a short week could be a little vulnerable. The Cleveland on a bye has a chance here to make it interesting at New England. That's what Baker should be talking about. Anything else, guys, it's on to New England. 
That's what the smart quarterbacks do. Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Andrew Luck when he played. Deshaun Watson. You know, we're talking about the next game. Here's Baker Mayfield still complaining this week about the officials, you know, 10 days ago. People need to be held accountable. You goof. You lead the NFL in interceptions. You're somebody that needs to be held accountable. Cleveland's got an excellent roster, star receivers, star running back, star pass rusher, great corners, a rookie head coach who needs your support. Held accountable? Who are you kidding? You were terrible against Seattle. You lost the game. You need to be held accountable. And nobody's talking about it. Players, star quarterbacks in this league aren't banging on the refs. They've moved on. You're talking about it. And freedom of speech. Do you understand what the First Amendment is? Did you go to class at Oklahoma? Freedom of speech protects us from our government, not from being fined from the National Football League, you goof. Held accountable? This is what I said. Johnny Manziel, Jameis Winston, Baker Mayfield. All talented. I said, I don't trust his judgment. I think he's got lousy judgment. Quarterback's about judgment. Okay, NFL leader in interceptions, running from cops, throwing footballs at people in college. That's just judgment. That's just really terrible instincts. Taunting the refs before New England. You understand refs are human? Do you understand? Do you ever watch? You ever notice this? Before an NFL game, have you ever noticed the veteran coaches Go up to the refs, put their arm. Hey, good seeing you, Bob. Good seeing you, Jack. Jim, good. How's the family over there? You ever notice that? You ever see Mike Shashevsky, John Calipari, Duke in Kentucky before big games, smiling? How are you doing? Haven't seen you since last year at Clemson. Because refs are human. You're playing a defense that is the best historically ever in their place, and you're taunting the refs. You should be sending the refs gifts. Watch coaches in college basketball. They're, they're sucking up to the refs before tip-off. Even Bobby Knight used to do that. He may yell at him during the game. He was sucking up before the game. Belichick. I, yeah, I've talked to NFL coaches. About, hey, how you doing? How's Margaret? How are the kids? Are they doing all well? That's what you do. They're human beings. You can call it, you know, you can call different things. I'm not saying refs are on the take, but they're human. You're taunting New England. You're taunting the refs. What are you doing? This is what worried me about him. Nick Wright talked about this this morning. You're talking about people being held accountable. You got a rookie head coach. You got a super talented roster. You got a GM that rolled the dice on you. You have an owner that rolled the dice on you. You were a two-time walk-on. You had a police video. They rolled the dice on you. You were not the highest-rated quarterback on most boards. Cleveland took a chance with a two-time 5'11 half walk-on who runs a 4'8'40. They're hoping... They can depend on you. And you're talking about accountability, freedom of speech, and the refs two weeks ago? Nick Wright this morning on First Things First. Instead of trying to fight City Hall, try to fight the opposition by not giving them extra possessions. Baker's played six games this year. In zero of those games has he thrown multiple touchdown passes. But in three of those games, he's had three turnovers. In all of those games, he's had at least one. He's got five touchdowns to 11 picks, and since he's taken over the team, he has 25 interceptions and 19 starts. That's, a, that's disastrous. You know the other thing? With young quarterbacks, I try not to crush them. Uh, for, you know, their rookie years, you can't even count them. Like I always say, first year, I don't even care about it. Like if they do something interesting, you're like, wow. Every time Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott talk, young, and Dak's still pretty young. Have you noticed this? Whenever Lamar Jackson talks, whenever Dak Prescott talks, it's about team. They blame themselves. I'm not good enough. I mean, Lamar Jackson's like, I heard the critics, and I think a lot of what they said was right. So I put on weight. Lamar Jackson is blaming himself. Always. Baker's always blaming somebody else. Stop asking the refs to be held accountable. You need to be held accountable. Your franchise and everybody in it rolled the dice to acquire a two-time walk-on with a police video. They took a big chance on you. 
Stop talking. Start winning. Watch Lamar Jackson. Watch how he acts at a press conference. Every press conference. Watch Dak. Every press conference. I was going to be nice this week. I wasn't even going to be critical. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.